Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence declares that the United States will no longer rely on the United Nations alone to assist persecuted Christians and other minorities across the Middle East in the wake of genocide and atrocities committed by Islamist terrorist groups across the chaotic region. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan declares the operation by the Turkish military in the Syrian northwestern province of Idlib as largely completed. British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson says that despite the decision by the United States not to certify the Iranian nuclear deal, London believes that the international agreement between world powers and Iran to curb Tehran's nuclear program will survive. U.S. Vice President Mike Pence is scheduled to visit Israel in December during the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah. In a trip the White House announced aimed at bolstering Washington's efforts and launching a comprehensive peace initiative between Israel and the Palestinians in particular and the Middle East as a whole. During his visit, Pence, who is considered to be a strong supporter of Israel, will meet with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Jerusalem and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas in the West Bank city of Ramallah. In addition to efforts at restarting an Israeli-Palestinian peace process, the American Vice President is also expected to hold discussions with Jerusalem on Israel's space program and regarding Washington's revision of its policy vis-à-vis -vis the Islamic Republic of Iran after President Donald Trump recently announced he would not recertify the international nuclear agreement. Meanwhile, Vice President Pence announced during an address in Washington that the United States will no longer rely on the United Nations alone to assist persecuted Christians and other minorities across the Middle East in wake of genocide and atrocities committed by Islamist terrorist groups across the chaotic region. Our fellow Christians and all who are persecuted in the Middle East should not have to rely on multinational institutions when America can help them directly. And tonight, it is my privilege to announce that President Trump has ordered the State Department to stop funding ineffective relief efforts at the United Nations. And from this day forward, America will provide support directly to persecuted communities through USAID. We will no longer rely on the United Nations alone to assist persecuted Christians and minorities in the wake of genocide and the atrocities of terrorist groups. The United States will work hand in hand from this day forward with faith-based groups and private organizations to help those who are persecuted for their faith. This is the moment. Now is the time. And America will support these people in their hour of need. We stand with those who suffer for their faith because that's what Americans have always done. Because the common bond of our humanity demands a strong response. And so as a nation, we pledge to support them in these trying times and every day. And every day, I know the American people offer forth a chorus of prayers for these communities from our hearts to the heart of heaven. The American vice president further declared that the United States will not relent until it hunts down and destroys the Islamic State at its source. Well, under the leadership of President Donald Trump, be assured, this administration calls these vicious actions by ISIS what they truly are. They are genocide and they are crimes against humanity and we will call them what they are. As a candidate, our president pledged to crush and destroy ISIS. And today, thanks to the courage of American armed forces and the resolve of our commander-in-chief, I'm pleased to report that ISIS is on the run. Three years ago, those barbarians celebrated in the streets of their self-declared capital in Raqqa. They proclaimed the start of a thousand-year caliphate as they raised their black flags across the region. But those black flags no longer fly in Raqqa. Just last week, American and Allied forces liberated Raqqa. And across Syria and Iraq, the caliphate is crumbling. You can be assured, we will not rest, we will not relent, until we hunt down and destroy ISIS at its source, so it can no longer threaten our people or anyone who calls the Middle East home. 
The statement by Vice President Pence coincides with Iraq's final offensive on the Islamic State near the country's western border with Syria and a successful operation by the U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic Forces Alliance, which resulted in the capture of the extreme Muslim group's de facto capital in Syria, that just three months and eight days after a U.S.-led operation eradicated the Islamic State from its de facto capital in Iraq, the city of Mosul. Now to the Turkish capital of Ankara, where President Recep Tayyip Erdogan declared the operation by the Turkish military in the Syrian northwestern province of Idlib was largely completed. Erdogan noted during an address to his ruling AK party that while Turkish forces have managed to secure most of the Idlib province, the neighboring province of Afrin, which is controlled by a Kurdish militia, remained an issue, signaling a warning to the Kurdish militias in Syria that Turkey will not remain indifferent to their actions and will possibly surprise them with an attack. Idlib'deki operasyon büyük ölçüde hamdolsun neticelendi. Şu anda Afrin konumuz var önümüzde. Bunların hepsi bizim için birer tehdittir. Ve biz ülkemiz için tehdit oluşturacak her alanda kararlıyız. Bunu herkesin bilmesini istiyoruz. Buralardan taviz veremeyiz. İşte daha önce de söyledik. Bir gece ansızın gelebiliriz. Bir gece ansızın bulabiliriz. Turkey's army began setting up observation posts in Idlib province this month under a deal with Russia and Iran to reduce fighting between insurgents and Syrian government forces, but the Turkish deployment was also seen as partly aimed at containing the Kurdish YPG militia. Turkey regards the YPG as an extension of the PKK, an internationally recognized terror organization that has been waging an armed insurgency against Ankara for three decades. While Turkey has supported rebels fighting Syrian President Bashar Assad throughout the Syrian civil war, since last year Ankara has shifted its focus towards securing its own border regions, both from jihadist and Kurdish forces that control much of the frontier areas inside Turkey's southern war-torn neighbor. Now to Great Britain, where British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson, in a special address on the United Kingdom's foreign policy earlier this week, declared London's belief in which the nuclear agreement between world powers and Iran to curb Tehran's nuclear program will survive, that despite the decision by the United States not to recertify the international deal. I have absolutely no doubt that with determination and with courage, the JCPOA can be preserved. This is not just because the essential deal is in the interests of Western security, though it is, but because it is profoundly in the interests of the Iranian people. Secretary Johnson underlined the significance of the nuclear agreement, termed the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA, as profoundly in the interests of the Iranian people emphasizing its role in setting the groundwork for the path of re-engaging between the Islamic Republic and the international community. We should continue to work to demonstrate to that population in Iran that they will be better off, that they will be better off under this deal and the path of re-engagement that it prescribes. While well, European powers, together with China and Russia, continue to declare their intent of preserving the nuclear deal regardless of U.S. action, the Islamic Republic of Iran declared that it would stick to the agreement as long as the other signatories respect it, but would shred the deal if the United States would decide to pull out. Thank you for watching us. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps.
first press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.